Revelations 13, 1 through 3. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast arise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like upon a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of the heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. Sabbath, everyone. Welcome back to another session of the Truth Enlighten. Uh, sorry to be late, that I'm late this afternoon because um, I just came back from the prison, and it's uh, you know a little way out from me. Just get back, and I was thinking whether I should go ahead and um, do this life, but yeah, some, you know, I think God wants me to do it anyway. So, God is not limited by time and space. So, uh, if I'm, you know, I'm normally come on at four, a little after, but today, I'm over an hour late compared to, you know, the time that I normally do this. But nonetheless, you know, God um, is here to bless. All right? So I want to thank you guys for your subscription. Thank you for likes and your, you know, sharing the videos. I trust that you... Um, I've been visiting the YouTube channel, and if you go there, those of you who have not yet liked and subscribed, you can do so, and hit the notification bell for the notification of videos that will be posted. And um, for those of you who have already subscribed, I want to thank you for your subscription, and uh, may God bless you and uh, prosper you and as you continue to play the role in helping the gospel to be spread because when you do so you're partnering and um, in a way helping this gospel message to gospel and help message to go beyond leaps and bounds all right so thank you and uh, today I have, we continue with our L talk along the lines of cigarette smoking and what it does to your eyes, right? And the question is, does smoking lead to AMD? The danger of smoking cigarettes have been well documented and uh, PSAs with dire warning about long-term and sometimes disabling art of effects of nicotine habits have circulated in the media for years. All major organs can potentially be affected by smoking, but the eyes is particular, but the eyes in particular have a unique vulnerability to disease associated with tobacco smoking. These include glaucoma, cataracts, and dry eye syndrome. Given its 
or propensities for reducing oxygen in the eyes, smoking has also been identified as a potent risk factor for age-related macular degeneration, AMD, an eye disease that causes retinal damage and potential vision loss. Symptoms of AMD include blurred vision, dark areas in the center of the, vi of the vision, the perception of straight lines as wavy, straight lines as wavy, and uh, colors appearing dimmer than normal, among others. Smoking is thought to worsen AMD in a few different ways, according to Christina Wing, a, a medical doctor, retinal specialist, surgeon, and professor at the ba Baylor College of Medicine. The chemicals in cigarettes can damage cells upsetting the balance of free radicals and antioxidant that help transport nutrients to the high. Additionally, smoke can lead to an inflammatory response that inhibits normal oxygen flow to the eyes. The long-term health effects are associated with cigarette and alternative to cigarette smoking that involves users inhaling and aerosolized vapor that contains nicotine, however, are still being studied. While the damage with cigarettes doesn't seem to be as pronounced as that of conventional cigarette smoke, there are clear damage there are clear damage still observed. So refraining from any type of smoking is the LTS is the LTS said wing. Even you've had a lifelong habit, it's never too late to quit smoking. Quitting smoking reduces the risk of AMD, and in fact, they've done natural history studies, and they found that after two decades of quitting, the risk of developing AMD becomes the same as it is for non-smokers. So even though that seems like a long period of time, the relative risk is lower every single year than you have stopped, that you have stopped smoking. Smoking may also worsen the risk of AMD in people with genetic pre predisposition to the eye disease. According to Vedi Dinania, MD, a retinal opera, a retinal opera phonologist and surgeon at NYU Langon Health, assessing the extent to the which each factor plays a role in development of AMD. However, be challenging. For people who are diabetic, smoking affects their blood vessels and kind of how healthy and kind of how healthy their cardiovascular system is. So does it affect AMD the same or similarly? Ask the Donia. I can say that we have numbers to say that it affects AMD 
this much or that much, but we do know that it affects it quite a bit. So, the best thing to do is to stop smoking. You know, he's off of smoking because it affects your health in a very bad way. All right? And, um, like I said, I give you guys the example that I used to smoke as, as well. And it's not nothing easy. Uh, you know, nobody says easy to quit, but um, it's not impossible. You can quit and, you know, you have nothing to lose. There is more to gain from quitting. All right, so I trust that this has been some kind of help to you. And if you don't smoke, but you know somebody who smokes, share this video. Alright, and you want to help them? We give all kinds of gifts. And the best gift we can give a person is to help them understand how to be healthier. Alright? So, that's my encouragement to you. Share, share the video so that somebody else could be helped. All right, let's move to our devotional for this afternoon, and that's caption, How do we take refuge under his wings, according to Psalms 91.4. We're looking at Psalms 91, um, the all of Psalms 91, and try to help break it down for, for you so that, you know, you can be able to understand the Psalms more, you know. When you read and you understand, then you're able to put into effect that which you have read and understood. If you don't understand, then, you know, it's harder to practice, you know, what you have read. The concept of taking a person under one wings is familiar to us today. When an individual is alone, in a new position, or needing special guidance, uh, another more experienced person may often to take the other under his or her wings to care for, teach, and guide. In Scripture, under his wings, is a metaphor for a protective refu refuge of God's presence. The imagery alludes to a mother bird taking our vulnerable uh, archlings under our wings to nurture, train, shelter, guide, and protect. All right, um... We know those of us, especially in the Caribbean and so on, who, you know, rear chickens. You see, when they, they hatch, the chickens hatch, the mother would take the, the chickens and, you know, bring them together under our wing so that she can keep them warm and protect them. I also see when the predatory birds, you know, um, like the chicken hawk would be in the area. The mother would make a song and the chickens will come to her and then she will, you know, hide them under her wings while remaining silent. You know, that's taking the chicks under her wings and protecting them. In like manner, God is using that metaphor that he will take us under his wings. Jesus applied the phrase, to his, <clears throat> to his concern for Israel. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her? How often I wanted to gather, you ch gather your children together as a hen gathereth her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. According to Matthew 23, 37, you can see Luke thirteen thirty four. Boaz recognizes that Ruth, a Moabite foreigner, had sought refuge under 
the under the God of Israel's wings, according to Ruth chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. People, people take refuge in the shadow of your wings, right? Says Psalms 36, 7. The psalmist seeks refuge and shelter under his wings, Psalms 57, verses 1 and 61, verses 4, and he even sings for joy in the shadow of his wings, Psalms 63, 7. But there is a richer, fuller application for under his wings that emerges in Psalms 91. In the first verse, the same idea of God as a sheltering refuge is established. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty, according to Psalms 91, verses 1. In God's presence are security, guidance, protection, and care. Some people, some some Bible verses replace the shelter of the Most High with a secret place of the Most High. In the Old Testament, the Jewish people asso associated God's presence with a specific place, the Holy of Holies. Inside the wilderness tabernacle and then later in the temple was a secret in the most chamber where only the high priest could enter once a year to make atonement for the sins of the people according to Exodus 28 and Hebrews chapter 9 verses 7. This sacred place of worship contained the Ark of the Covenant covered by the mercy seat which God was enthroned and his holy presence dwelled among his people. Exodus 25, 22, and Numbers 7, 89. Upon the mercy seat sat the sat two hammered, hammered gold cherubim, or angels, with their wings overshadowing the heart. The cherubim will face each other and look down on the atonement cover. With their wings spread above it, they will protect it according to Exodus 25, 21, 20. The one who dwells in the secret place of the Most High and abides in the shadow of the Almighty is the one whose sins have been atoned for and who stands clear and for, for clean and forgiven. Only then can one say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, according to Psalms 91 verses 2. The psalmist continues, surely he will save you from the, from the fowler snares and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His, forth, his faithfulness will be your, your shield and and rampart according to 9 to 1 verses 3 through 4. Those who are protected by the salvation of the Lord through faith in Jesus Christ will dwell forever in God's presence. They will escape death and the snare of the devil. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 24. They can now enter the secret place, the Holy of Holies, Hebrews 10, 19 through 22. They can boldly approach God's throne of grace, Hebrews 4, 16. Anytime, not just once a year, because of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, 
and his shed blood which which open up a new and living way from the days of the wilderness wanderings the people of God are taking refuge under his wings he found them in a desert land in an empty hollowing wasteland he surrounded them and watched over them like an eagle that roused the roses or chicks and however over and over over or young so he spread his wings to take them up and carry them safely on on his pinion the Lord also guided them Deuteronomy 32 verses 10 through 12 whatever the children of Israel needed help whenever the children of Israel needed help they prayed hide me under the shadow of your wings Psalm 17 verses 8 and now because of Jesus Christ redeeming sacrifice we can forever abide under his wings in the protected shelter of his presence so just as God has guided the children of Israel through the desert land through the wilderness yet cover them cover them by day with a cloud and by a pillar of cloud and by night a pillar of fire right and just as how he has done that they call upon him whenever they call upon him he was there to answer their call and cuddle them under his wing in the same way God is going to be with you those of those of us who call upon his name who have um accepted is death as our atoning sacrifice receiving you know that blood that was shed for us washing us clean from all our sin when we abide in Jesus that is what he does he's going to shelter us from all harm and he's going to cover us with his mighty harm and under his wings he will protect us if we call upon him we can call upon him at any time anywhere no matter where you are at work at play in your bed on your couch right in your car wherever you go you can take the name of Jesus with you you can call upon him and know for sure that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will cuddle you like an ant, cuddle it or a chick, and comfort you and guide you and see you through because he loves you. God loves all of us. Is as a result of love, right? He came to the cross and died so that we who believe, whoever believe in him, shall not perish but have everlasting Christ. For he came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Salvation is full and free. Salvation, right, is at your fingertip. Right? Salvation is a breath away. Just call upon him while he's near. Right? And see him go to work for you. He has done it for many. He has done it for me. Right? And he can do it for you. Right? And if he has done it before, he can do it again. There's nothing to, there's no person too wretched that God can't cleanse, you know. And God can um, make whole. The only person God cannot work on or save is the person who refused to confess their sins before him. Right? That's the only person. So there's no sin too great, right? There's no hack too, uh, you know, 
diabolic that God cannot, you know, wash you from. So, again, call upon him while he's near. And he will see you through. Not when you're in a situation, you know, you know, I don't want God now because I'm young. I'm flouncing and bouncing. You know, I don't want God now because my bank account is full or that kind of thing. And then, when you lose everything, then remember God. Remember the Creator in the days of thy youth. You know, today is the accepted hour, right? He said, today you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Right? So, this will bring us to the, you know, the hand and um, bring the court in down here at this time. And may God continue to bless us and keep us. And may he see you through. May he see us, you know, you know, may he guide you in everything that you do. And call upon him and see what he'll do. You know, he'll always come true for you. All right, friends gonna fail, family gonna fail, but God never fail, right? He never failed me yet. So thank you. May God bless you, and may He cause you know prosper you, and you know see you through in your health, wealth, and more so in your spirituality. Until next time, love you. Until take care.